Let's take a look at a TypeScript problem that I ran into this week. It's a weird situation where I can express what I want to do in my types, but I can't actually write code that meets those types. What we're looking at here is a simplified version of the code that I was working with earlier this week. In my case, I was using a bunch of React query hooks. And in a particular component, I had a bunch of hooks that I needed to resolve the data for before I could actually go on and render my component. And so instead of managing the loading state of a bunch of separate hooks, I wanted a wrapper utility that would manage the loading state of each of those hooks inside of that and just give me a single is loading Boolean and data back in my actual React component. And so we have these two getters here at the top that are kind of representing our React query hooks. In our case, they're just functions that return some constant value here. And the idea is I want to be able to use one of these structures down here at the bottom. And in my work, I was kind of playing with both of these as possible options. One is we pass our set of hooks as an object, and we want to get back the data in the same shape. So our return value should have widget and the return value of widget and then gadget and the return value of gadget. Now, the other way, of course, to do this would be with an array. And so that's the other one I was looking at. And then we can have our different queries here in this array. And likely we can easily destructure that on the other side as we get that data back into our React component. So this feels like a pretty handy way to manage a lot of data. If you've got several React query hooks or whatever your asynchronous data fetching hook system is in your React application. However, of course, I wanted to strongly type these wrapper utilities. And so that's where these two functions come in get data object and get data array so let's take a look at the first one here get data object it's pretty straightforward we're taking some set of getters and the type of getters is a record of string to a function that returns some value t the cool part here i think is the mapped type that we can use as our return value notice that we have this object syntax and then we have k in key of g for each key in our object g then we want that to be a key in our return value and the value for each of those keys should be in our case the return type of g of k and so for each one of our keys k there's going to be some function in g and in the output we want the value here to be the return type of that function and so this makes a lot of sense we want to just map our input to an output same shape different types for the values in those objects and as we can see this actually works so if i hover over a1 here we have a key for widget, which has the value widget, a key for gadget, which has the value gadget. If we were to add a new one in here and have some other function that returns something else, then if we hover over array one, we can see that we get foobar return string. And of course, if I just say that this is a constant string and not just a regular string, then we should see foobar is foobar. Exactly, right? And so the idea here is that no matter what keys we put in, we'll be able to get a strongly typed object coming out of that. We can do a very similar thing for get data array. Just like get data object, we can actually map over the indexes of our array elements and do the exact same thing. So you can map over an array or really it's more like a tuple in this case, but this works exactly the same way as it does for objects. Really the only difference here is that our getters shape Instead of extending a record of string to function, it just extends a read-only array of those functions. And so we take an array of our functions, and then we can map over them for our return values. And also, this one works. So if we hover over a2 here, you can see we have widget is at index 0, and gadget is at index 1. And of course, we can do the same thing here, where we say foobar as const. And if we now look at a2, you can see we have widget gadget and foobar. So what is the problem that I was mentioning earlier? Well, the problem is that I can't actually write function bodies for these functions. There's no way to write code that TypeScript thinks will satisfy these function declarations. Now you're probably thinking, wait a second, I can think of several ways that I could implement either of these functions and go ahead and give it a try. Pause the video right now if you want. But let me talk you through some of the challenges that I've seen when trying to write these functions. So let's start with get data object. The main problem with this one is that there isn't a way that I've found to iterate over the keys of an object in a strongly typed way. Now you might think of object.keys, but go check it out. Object.keys just returns an array of strings. It doesn't return, say, like a constant tuple or something like that of the keys of an object. And if you think about it, it makes sense because here's a thing that we can do with TypeScript, right? And this works because TypeScript is shape-based. I can have a function here that takes some object that has an ID as a string. And I have two objects here, both have an ID as a string. One has more than that. It has other keys as well. And I can pass both of these 
objects to with ID, and both of these are valid because both of these satisfy what is essentially a minimum requirement for an object being passed to our with ID function. Now inside with ID, if I called object.keys on props, you might expect that I would only get back an array of one key, which would be ID. But the truth is, that's not how this works. I could get ID or I could get other. And so object.keys has no way to be strongly typed. There's no way to know exactly the full set of keys you could expect, because really, your set of objects is anything that has at least ID of string. And so there isn't really a great way to map over an object and get a strongly typed object map back out of your function. The only way that I was able to do this was with lodash, specifically the map values function. Now you might think that's okay, but it's kind of cheating because lodash is implemented in JavaScript and then there's a type definition file. And so the JavaScript doesn't really have to meet the type definitions. It just has to say, hey, this is the type definition for this JavaScript function. And so the lodash type definitions for map values has a return type very similar to what we're using here, but it's just being applied to a JavaScript function. And so it's not really doing it in TypeScript. Okay, so what about get data array? This one really feels like it should be possible to me because if the challenge with the object version is is mapping of the keys. Well, an array has like a predefined set of keys, right? They're numbers, zero, one, two, etc. We know the keys for our array. And if we say this is a read-only array where we've got some number of elements in it, and we know that they're all functions that return some value t, this should work, right? Except it doesn't. I've tried so many different versions of this using Lodash, using different types of iteration, and I cannot get this function to actually work. There is one kind of hack that does work, and let's take a quick look at that. It's a little bit of a pain to write because essentially you need to have a function overload for every possible number of arguments that you might want. And so the way this works is we have a function declaration here for an array with only one item, and we can say this array has a function that returns a t1, and we expect t1 as our output. And then we can write the same thing for a function that takes two getters, a getter that returns t1 and a getter that returns t2. And then of course, we take that array of two getters and we return an array or a tuple of t1 and t2. And then of course, we have our final signature here, which is part of our implementation. And it just accepts an array of some number of values and returns an array of t. And of course, this works because our function actually uses one of our either t1 or t1, t2 function declarations. And so if we hover over data here, you can see that we do get widget and gadget in the order you would expect. And of course, it's a very simple implementation. We just have to map over the functions and call them. And so this is the only pure TypeScript way I've been able to solve my problem here. It's a little bit of a pain because you're going to have to write a function signature for every one of the possible numbers of a getters that we could pass in this function. But you stick this in a utility file and you move on, right? If you don't want to explicitly cast types, then this is kind of the only way to do it. Well, that's kind of what I have for you in this video. It's not a lot about solutions, mainly about one of the challenges that TypeScript seems to support, but then doesn't have a great way to actually actually write code to implement these types. But maybe I'm missing something. If there are ways that you have seen this problem solved, preferably in just TypeScript and ideally without any type of explicit casting going on, then I would love to hear about that. So please do let me know in the comments. Well, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.